Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer and today I'm going to take a photo walk with my friend Alexi. You all know him of course, We've been, uh, he's been in my videos many times before. <laughs> yes, I have and it's always lots of fun. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to have a photo walk with you. Definitely. Today we have a specific theme or topic. We have a 28 millimeter theme today, and uh, it means, of course, 28 millimeter lens uh, uh, for both. Uh, which setup do, do you have? I have the Sony A7C and the Sony Zone 28 millimeter f2. One of my favorite combos, actually. I'm a big fan of the 28 millimeter, <laughs> and I'm a fan of this combo in particular, actually. So it's a good day for me. So you have the a7C. We'll yeah. talk about that uh, later in this video. My setup is the a7 uh, 4 and uh, the Viltrox 28 millimeter f1.8. This is my only 28 millimeter lens. I do have the 40 millimeter for micro four thirds, but today I wanted to have a real 28 millimeter, no equivalents today. That's funny because I was also thinking of taking an equivalent, but then I thought, let's go for the real thing. Yeah, yeah, today it's the real thing. <laughs> You said a 28 is your favorite lens. What makes it so special? I don't know. I think it's kind of the sweet spot lens. If I'm not taking a zoom with me, it's almost always this 28 millimeter or some ah. other 28 millimeter. For me, it's the for me it's 28 millimeter is the natural focal length somehow. It's very versatile, right, and I, I, I'm not afraid even going quite close with it. And you know ignoring the distortions if I take kind yeah, of yeah, environmental yeah. portraits of people. Nowadays it's it's not that exact science anymore. That's interesting because my all-time favorite always has been a twin, uh, 35 but uh, with the GR3 mm -hmm. I learned to like uh, the 28 yeah. equivalent angle of view and today I really like 28. I'm not sure if it's uh, still my favorite lens, but I but I like it a lot and I feel comfortable with it now, which I did not feel earlier. I think especially in, in kind of more tighter environments where I really learned to like the 28 millimeter was in Hong Kong somehow mm. on, the, on the streets that you get kind of wide enough shots, but you get close enough. Yeah. In, maybe an environment like here, it's not, you know, so necessary, but mm. in certain places, it's the perfect focal length. I get it. I get it. I also like that on a full frame camera, a 28 also offers quite shallow depth of field if necessary. I'm not saying you have to have that, but it's a, uh, it's a good, like, like a asset or 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 a good uh, feature to have if you if you need it. It definitely definitely is true. For example, I've sometimes been in some interview sit situations as a writer, and then I've taken a photograph of the subject, and you get a nice little even in a cafe, you get a little bit of separation from the people in the yeah. background, especially with an F2. We both like a simple setup, right, for a photo walk like this. Definitely. And today we both have only one lens and one camera. But if you had to take another lens with your 28, what lens would it be? For me, I think without a doubt it would be the 85 millimeter. 28 and, and 85. Yeah, actually nowadays, I'll correct that, it would be the Samyang 75 mm because they have a really small one in their tiny but, but a short series. telephoto anyway. A short telephoto in All any right, case. Alright, that's interesting because I would take a 50. Right. 28 and a 50. If I knew I had to make some portraits, then I would take a, a short telephoto. But for a, uh, for a photo walk, uh, I would take always a, a 50 over a short telephoto. Interesting, yeah. I mean. Compared to the 75 millimeter, there's not that much of a difference, but still, still it is enough of a difference. But I kind of like the compression effect, and I like to get a little bit like you know mm. certain shots, for example, across the street. Mm. And the 75 millimeter or 85 millimeter is perfect for that. And I get it. I get it. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. <laughs> it's not wrong. <laughs>
this has nothing to do with today's theme or topic, but I happened to notice on one of the websites, forget which one, there was some speculation or talk if Canon also should start making uh, retro looking cameras. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> or retro design in general? <laughs> Well, that's a that's a good question. First of all, I too long for the good times, you know, the old times of song being a middle-aged man. <laughs> but, You're still a youngster. <laughs> well, let's say on the on the younger scale of middle middle age then. But uh, yeah, for me, it's a little bit of a tricky question in the sense that I feel that just having a retro camera for the sake of it being retro is not my thing. Mm. I, I just feel that it shouldn't be like the main focus of a camera. I mean, even this has a little bit of a retro kind of yes. nod in it, having the silver top and mm. so on. But personally for me, camera is all about functionality. Mm. And of course, if you know, if the old kind of retro style controls are your thing and you know, they enhance your photo taking experience, go for it. But for me, just retro for the sake of retro doesn't take my, you know, chart of what's needed in a camera. I kind of agree. I, I also like the retro style and design. And of course, we all would like to go back uh, to the old times, at least every once in a while. I've always seen Canon as one of the sort of a trendsetters or pace setters when it comes to exterior design. I remember when the EOS 1 came out, it made instantly the the Nikon was the four back then. It made that look like a dinosaur all Def of a sudden. Definitely, I was shooting Nikon back then, and I got a little bit of Canon envy because yes, they so, were so far ahead in the design game. Yes, at that point in yes, time. Yes, exactly. And they've never been really into retro. I don't think they've ever released any retro style camera. So I highly doubt they will ever do that. But of course, if, if they come up a really nice functional design, I wouldn't mind, of course. And the other side of it is nowadays you could say that their kind of traditional DSLR design is kind of retro. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. that, that originates <laughs> quite far back. Hey, I notice you have a good looking new bag. Yes, this is a uh, big thanks to Focus Nordic Finland. They let me try this bag before I decide whether I want it or not. But this is a new bag. Last winter, when I was in Kuala Lumpur, I had to abandon my long serving bag. It was going apart. It, was, it, was, it had holes in it and everything. So I threw it away or recycled and uh, I've been looking for a new back and this is a, a peak design back. Don't remember which model, but it's a six liter back. I was looking for something quite compact, but big enough to take all my video production <laughs> <laughs> equipment. And uh, so far I like it, but this is the first time I'm wearing this back or using this back. So, you know, it's a funny thing because I, I think I've never had a dedicated camera bag. Like for, I always have just some old flea market bag or mm. something from Hong Kong or from India. I think <laughs> I got this in India <laughs> online. It's just like some kind of generic yeah. bag, which I throw my cameras into when I'm out for a walk like this. And then of course, you know, if I'm going for a client shoot, I need something a little bit more professional. I know people do that a lot. Uh, I don't know, maybe I should also try some of the flea markets or try to look for completely another kind of bag that is not uh, designed to be as a, as a camera bag, but some of those bags can work like that one. That's an added bonus to it. You don't really look like you're a yeah. photographer out there, or yeah. maybe, maybe I do like, like look like a geek anyway, but still. Yeah, you look, you're a special, <laughs> <laughs> a special case. <laughs> So you have the Sony 28mm f2. How do you like that lens? I mean, I have to tell uh, a story first. I once had that lens, but I had to return it because it was so decentered that it was simply un unusable. 
That's a completely different experience than mine because <laughs> this is a super sharp lens. But Sony did have problems in the beginning with quality control. I have to say, even the Zeiss lenses, the early yes. ones, had problems like that. I've had several of the 24 to 70s that were completely off, and then I've had a tack sharp one also. But this one is great. It's one of my sharpest. You, you have to keep that. <laughs> I'm definitely keeping <laughs> and this one. And treat it well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like this Viltrox. This is a little bit bigger than yours. Yeah, uh, it is definitely. But quite I, a bit actually by like yes, 30%. considering that this is uh, only a third of a stop faster yeah. uh, maximum aperture. But I like this. I think it it's it's for for the price. It's a really nice lens and I have a separate video so I put it somewhere on the screen so you can take a look if you're interested. And the same third also. What? <laughs> <laughs> and it's centered? <laughs> yes, this is, yeah, this is perfectly centered, yes, it's... In general, I feel nowadays you, you come across less and less decentered lenses. It used to be a bigger problem 10 years back, yes. and even f then further back. I. I, I tend to agree, yes, and I also agree that Sony definitely had a problem when they started out with their with the, their mirrorless cameras. They had a problem with the quality control. Yeah, and that gave them a little bit of a bad reputation in the beginning. Like many yes. many professionals were a little bit hesitant to switch over to Sony because of those problems. But yes, I think they've been fixed quite nicely. Yes. That was our 28 millimeter photo walk with a couple of detours and deviations as always, but it was a good fun. <laughs> Lots of fun. Nice to do it in this area for a change. Yes, I never, I never, I don't come here often. Thanks for joining in guys and uh, please do check out Alex's Instagram feed too. He has some good stuff there. Thanks for joining in and see you in the next one. See you guys.